Hello, hello. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Thank you for checking this video. Alex here, thank you for checking this video. And welcome to this live streaming from Elementary OS. This is a um, test that I'm doing here just to see um, how the laptop, the System76 laptop and Elementary OS are performing on, um, yeah, on this new laptop that I'm probably gonna use to do some live streaming, live coding, live sessions. Let me know if you can hear my sound. I'm using a USB um, microphone. Hello, Daniel. We already have some uh, comments here. Let me pop out chat and let me hide this. I'm gonna stop the live streaming because I don't want this. So this can go down. Okay, the chat is detached. Hey, hey guys, how's how's the audio? Can you can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear everything? The live chat, it's here. Everyone can read the live chat, but whatever. I'm I'm on a laptop, so I have just one screen. I'm not using anything else. Uh, how's the audio? Is is it fine? Can you guys hear me properly? Sasa test one two three. This is the, the the microphone that it should be should be here and should be working. Let me know how do you guys. Um, Hello, hey, I hear you, no problem. Oh, fantastic, all good news. Okay, uh, MD, you use uh, Elementary US Loki in your Sony Vaio, that's amazing. Yes, it's it's perfect, it's fantastic. I, I really like this operating system. So I'm testing, I'm doing this live streaming just to test the um, how this setup is, it's okay. I'm using an ethernet cable, I'm connected to the router with an ethernet cable. I have the uh, webcam, uh, the Logitech webcam attached with a USB, and I have the um, Blue Yeti microphone attached via USB as well. I'm using these for, uh, um, for, uh, for the audio, and I'm using OBS, Open Broadcaster, to stream live and I created a bunch of scenes. This is the, the, the second scene, this is the first scene. So I'm gonna switch to the second scene. I'm gonna uh, hide OBS, that's perfect. Audio is clear. You have a problem with Eclipse. I, I don't know, like never used Eclipse. Or, I mean, I used it in the past and many, many years ago. So I don't know. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch desktop and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing on Elementary S. Yes. So I set up my... Um, What's it called? This my <laughs> um, terminal to uh, use um, Z shell. Oh my Z shell. Oh my ZSH. How do you want to call it? Whatever. This is great because it gives me like the autocomplete of all the stuff that I did before. So if I have myself, for example, if I want to access to a project, it gives me the autocomplete of my project build, and I can access it. It gives me also the indication of. Uh, if I'm on a Git branch, which branch I'm in, if I have different branches, or if it's Git branch, I have the list of branches. This is standard, but it's color coded really nicely and really easy to understand, really easy to use. But anyway, if we open also Visual Studio Code, that is something that I'm using a lot on Linux here, I'm using SQLer. Oh, yes, yeah, I need to purchase Monokai Pro. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, yeah. Uh, this is how, how do you guys, is, is it like fluid? Does it work properly? If I do stuff like this, it's, it's clunky, it's responsive. It, it looks, it looks okay. It looks bad. Like, let me know. It's, this is just a test live streaming to see how good is this settings in this system. The laptop, it's kind of quiet. It's like the fan of the CPU fan is spinning a lot because of course a lot of things are going on right now, but it doesn't doesn't feel like it's too warm and it's it's holding up pretty nicely. It's not too too heavy or I don't know. It's not bad, I guess. <laughs> Let me know, guys, if you if you think it's it's okay if it looks okay. Um, 
Luis says, Alessandro, you're the best. <laughs> Thank you. I'm learning WP WordPress with your 101 series. It's going greatly great. <laughs> we'll be applying for a cool job after finish WP series. Cheers from Colombia. Oh, hello, Luis. Thanks, thanks. Cheers from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, I'm glad. Like, if you can find a job after my series, just it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's the whole po purpose of doing tutorials, like helping you guys find jobs. So it's, it's amazing. But... Uh, yeah, this is elementary OS, and um, I'm currently coding the new version of SQLer that it's kind of hard <laughs> because I'm testing. Like, let me guys, let me show you what I'm doing on CMake, make compile. Okay, that's perfect. Let's trigger. This is the dev um, development branch of SQLer. The new thing that I'm doing here, I'm trying to connect and uh, giving the ability to use a port because of course a database could be on a different port of the server. Usually a database is installed on the 3306 port of a server, but sometimes it could be on a custom port if someone just installed it on a custom port. Um, and it's kind of tricky because the libgda, the library that I'm using, the built-in library in uh, in GNOME that allows a software to connect to a database are really good. Are you guys still on? Very fluid. Oh, it's it, it's still going on? Yes. Did you see the, the screen going black for a second? and then re reconnecting another second. I don't know what the hell happened, but I don't know. Okay, let's continue. Let me know if you have any issues or you're seeing any problems here. Uh, if the, whatever, I'm testing this thing. And do you guys see the screen going dark for a second? I don't know, but whatever. Well, I wanted to show you like the, the library here and probably now everything is gonna crash because what I'm doing, like for example, I have the setup that it's set on my local host. If I test my connection without sending any port, that's perfect. Testing connection, successfully connected. If I specify a fake port, for example, I don't know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I start testing connection, it can connect to my SQL server on local host, one, one, one. Okay, perfect. But this is great. If I set the connection on a port that it's actually used by a server, for example, port 80 that is used by the Apache server, it will freeze. I'm not going to do it now, but the, the entire uh, user interface freezes and, and the application doesn't crash, but it freezes the entire uh, UI. And it's something like that I hate so much. And another thing that I don't like, for example, if I connect to my remote database that it's far, far away and I write an SQL comment. So for example, select, everything from WP posts. So I'm gonna select all the posts from the WordPress database of my live website. And because of this, I have a lot of posts, I have a lot of taxonomies, a lot, a lot, a lot of things going on. If I run the query, the interface freezes for a couple of seconds before it retrieves all the information because these are a lot of entries. Look at that, look at all the things. So the thing that I'm currently working on is first I wanna convert all the um, all these functions, all these functions that they connect to a database, uh, I want to change them to be a synchron, a synchronous method. So uh, building an asynchronous method in Vala is not that easy. I thought it was easy. It's not that easy because you have to delegate that job to that asynchronous method. But the asynchronous method has to yield to the main application in order to not freeze the UI, freeze the graphical user interface. And it's really complicated. It doesn't work for me, especially because a database connection throws an error. And an error, it's hard to handle an error via an asynchronous method. It's it's convoluted. At least for me, it's really convoluted. But I'm dealing with this stuff. I'm converting this. But probably later today, I should release a new version of SQLer and uh, definitely check it out. It's gonna have a lot of nice things. Then I'm rebuilding the UI a little bit. I wanna have a better library. And another thing that I wanna do when you connect to the database, it shows the full list of tables. And if you click on a table, it shows you the results of that table without you typing any SQL uh, thing, yeah? So yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Rec Production said, what's up? What's up? Everything is up. So 
Yeah, this is the thing. That was just a really simple test to check how this um, this thing goes. Uh, stream is healthy. Ah, the stream health is not that great. Hmm. Video output is low. Okay. Um, I am unable to find PHP error log and error report in elementary OS. And it's in the dark. Ugh. Did you install PHP? What what type of server do you have? Do you have Apache? If it's in Apache, if you have Apache in your elementary OS, you should have it in um, in your Apache folder. I don't know exactly where uh, Apache folder elementary elementary OS, but it should be inside etc. Um, Boom, boom, no, let me go back. Well, I'm for an elementary OS. It's here, Apache. Apache 2. Install Apache 2, Apache 2. Yeah, usually if you use Apache 2, it should be inside the Apache 2 server, uh, Apache 2 folder that is inside uh, forward slash etc, forward slash user etc or something like that. I'm not 100% sure because, of course, I just started with elementary OS, so I'm not... Not super sure. If I'm not an answer, I'm gonna write you and I'm gonna tell you. But the live streaming says it's like the the health of the live streaming it's really bad. So I think I'm gonna stop right now. This was just a super simple, stupid, stupid test. So thank you guys for watching the video. Ugh. Thank you guys for watching this video. And tomorrow we're gonna have another tutorial about WordPress plugin development. I'm gonna show you a bunch of crazy things that I hope you're gonna really, really like. So thank you so much, guys, for following these live streaming tests. I hope it went well. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Happy coding!